What is up guys, it's Alex here, back for another video. As you guys can see, I am now back from my uh, skiing vacation that I went to. Some of you may have not even noticed that I was gone as I did actually have videos set to publish uh, on YouTube while I was gone, but you know, maybe you noticed that I did not uh, respond to any comments and you know, obviously also I wasn't streaming uh, this past weekend, so. But now I'm back and um, I do wanna apologize if I happen to not address or not respond to your comments on YouTube. I do try to read and answer all of them. Uh, but sometimes, you know, I, I do rely on notifications either on YouTube or on my email to, uh, you know, see the comments. And sometimes, for whatever reason, uh, YouTube or my email doesn't decide to give me the notifications. So if I do miss your comments, no, it's not on purpose, uh, you know, so, uh, but I do apologize if that happens. And uh, real quick, also before I get into this, uh, the giveaway is going to be coming up this weekend uh, on uh, Saturday the 13th. I will do a final giveaway announcement video in the next couple of days. Um, once again, uh, there will be two giveaways uh, and the prizes are going to be either $100 in cash or a three hour coaching session with me or for a third meme prize, thanks to uh, Kenny. I will be shaving one of my eyebrows. So, you know, you would get to choose me to shave an eyebrow and that's basically two giveaways. So one eyebrow per giveaway. I'm sure I'll end up with one less eyebrow and uh, minus $100 when all is said and done. But anyway, uh, it is what it is. I think it's kind of, a, kind of interesting, kind of fun. So um, <clears throat> that's what we will be doing. So be on the lookout for that. Once again, you got to uh, follow me on Twitch, uh, sub on YouTube, and also follow and like the Facebook page and make sure your likes on Facebook are public to be eligible for the giveaway. All right. Um, oh, and uh, also, if you guys happen to be uh, you know interested in seeing some photos and whatnot of uh, the skiing vacation I went to, um, you know, I will be posting some of those on YouTube and uh, in Discord as well, probably today, maybe tomorrow. So check that out if you're interested. All right, uh, so let's get into this. Uh, this video is going to be an overview of Inferno. Uh, you know, kind of like my other overviews, this is not gonna include uh, any gameplay. You know, it's not a demonstration. It's just gonna be an overview where I discuss the town, discuss the strengths and weaknesses, and, um, you know, provide a little bit of uh, kind of strategy tips on uh, how to play Inferno. And the uh, thing is, you know, I've I started these videos a while ago, the series of overviews, and I will be doing a demonstration with Inferno as well uh, sometime soon. But the reason that I've kind of held off on the last four towns that I haven't done yet, which is Inferno, Rampart, Cove, and um, Stronghold, is because I'm just not that good with those towns, and I'm actually not that experienced with those towns. So. If you guys happen, like, do let me know what you guys think uh, about this video and do let me know if uh, you disagree with anything that I've said and maybe if you guys have any uh, strategy tips of your own on how to play uh, these towns and, you know, in this video, Inferno, uh, do let me know in the comments below. Uh, so, because I am also trying to improve myself uh, with these towns. And uh, yeah, I am completely open to suggestion. And, uh, you know, I do realize that maybe I don't necessarily play these in the perfect way or, you know, in the, in the way that they can be played. So, uh, but yeah, but I do think that it's time and, you know, this will probably help me actually improve with these towns as well. So let's just get into this. All right. So as far as Inferno goes, um, you know, it really is one of those towns, you know, everybody's favorite, right? You know, Inferno is everybody's favorite. Uh, it, it really is one of those towns that has more weaknesses than strengths. And, you know, it, it's, a sh it's kind of a shame. I do actually like Inferno. I do like the concept. I do like the units. You know, I like the the lore that they're actually aliens. You know, if you guys are not aware of that, you know, that's explored in more detail in the Might and Magic um, series. So they are pretty interesting. The units are pretty interesting, but 
I wish it was better. <laughs> you know, there are just a lot of things going against it, and not that many things going for it. You know, there's a reason why Inferno is basically always uh, going to be starting at plus gold against anybody because it's just not as good as you know most of the other towns. And um, so let's just go over their kind of strengths and weaknesses to, you know, just uh, just discuss that a little bit. So <clears throat> as far as their strengths go, I do think that Inferno has some interesting mechanics and some interesting units. Like, for example, you can go for demon farming. Uh, that's, uh, you know, something that's pretty interesting, right? You know, you're able to actually accumulate a stack of, you know, demons by resurrecting, you know, your own um, fallen units with pit lords. So... That is definitely an interesting mechanic. No other town, no other town has a mechanic that's exactly like that. So that's something that you can utilize, and I do think it's an advantage uh, for Inferno that you know, if used properly, can be good. Now there is a problem with it, but you know, I'll get to that in the kind of weaknesses. Uh, you know, when we talk about that. Um, you know, also you do have the Freed Sultans who are pretty damn good units. They are uh, speed 13, so when you get Freed Sultans, it's going to be hard to outspeed you. So usually you'll have the first move. Uh, you know, you can outspeed angels, you can outspeed dragons, um, you know, you tie speed with the dragonflies from Fortress. So really the only way to guarantee uh, that your opponent can outspeed you when you have a freed sultans is if he has a firebird uh right so those are useful and of course uh they are fire immune which you know allows you to uh do some kind of armor bombing or just armor strats in general so that's pretty cool and also inferno is one of the three towns that actually can roll Armageddon in the Mage Guild itself, right? The other two being Necro and Dungeon. So no other town can actually get Armageddon, well, unless you're Conflux, I guess, and you get the um, uh, Grail building there. But, um, you know, so you can go for Armageddon tactics as well as Inferno. So that would be an advantage also. But, um, well, you know, you can also talk about the Devils and Archdevils. Archdevils are pretty good. Um, you don't see them that often because they are pretty expensive. The regular Devils, I mean, they're all right. Not super amazing. The problem with them, I mean, they do have some interesting abilities. They have the uh, No Retaliation, which is great. They also have Minus Luck that they give to the opponent. And the Archdevils give Minus 2 Luck, which is great. Uh, but they are just not, because of those abilities, you know, they're not as strong as, you know, for example, angels or something like that. Uh, they just don't really hit as hard and they don't tank damage as well. So while they are good and the arch devil specifically, you know, they are really fast. So it's going to be hard to outspeed you if you do happen to get arch devils. And, uh, you know, that teleportation ability is also pretty useful, you know, uh, they can get across walls and whatnot, across obstacles, so that's good. Uh, so if you do manage to build Arch Devils, uh, they are a pretty good unit. But that's pretty much where the uh, strengths kind of end. And now we got, you know, a list of weaknesses. Um, so... I mean, it's like, where do you start? You know, with Inferno, you're kind of whammied on all sides. You um, don't really have good heroes. I mean, your best options are Kalth and Ignatus, which are your starting options, really. And they're just not that good. I mean, well, they're, they're not horrible. They're not completely horrible. They will get a decent stat progression. Uh, you know, they will have decent um, battle stats. But when we're talking about, uh, you know, like a skill progression, it's not that great. They don't have that great of a chance of rolling earth magic, which is usually really necessary, especially when you're playing a town that's as limited as Inferno. So... 
you're kind of at a disadvantage on you know uh, a lot of sides here and yeah not being able to roll earth magic and you know not having a great skill progression is you know certainly not helping you and the heretic class is just not great you do have aiden who's an intelligence specialist that's kind of your best hero it's the only hero that actually made it into my hero tier list that i did way back I mean, the only Inferno hero that made it into the tier list. So uh, it can be helpful, the intelligence specialty, but as a heretic, heretics are just not that great also. So yeah, the heroes are not great. The units overall are pretty weak. Uh, when you're, you know, imps are basically the worst uh, tier one unit. And even if you start as Ignatus, it's really easy to bleed away your imp stack. He does offer you some advantages, but I think Kalth is a little bit more of a stable start because, you know, with the Magogs, uh, you can at least kind of control the fights a little bit more and, you know, not die to some, like, lucky morales or something like that. Um... You also don't have crypts for whatever friggin' reason, you know, have, have a look at the actual terrain. You do have churchyards, which you can do on Koth as well, but no crypts. There's no crypts on Inferno terrain. And the terrain itself is really friggin' annoying as well, so check this out. The color of the terrain, you know, it's not necessarily that big of a disadvantage, but... When you have a look at this terrain, you know, you can barely see. So here, you know, you guys can see that I'm trying to uh, see their hex grid, their movement grid by, you know, hovering over the uh, air elementals and pressing shift. And because the terrain is black, you can't see it. It's so hard to see. Like, you really have to, like, get close to the screen to actually see that movement terrain. So certainly, you know, annoying. <laughs> not only, it's like a crack-brained one said, not only do your units suck, but you also can't see anything when you're in fights. So, yeah, that also does not help. And uh, the kind of probably one of the biggest uh, one of the biggest problems with Inferno is the fact that it's difficult to kind of snowball. It's difficult to start snowballing, uh, you know, creature banks like hives, pickets, consoles, whatever. Um, you know, and. It's because you usually start with cult, right? But even if you start as Ignatus, uh, you just cannot tank. You just cannot tank in hives. As cult, I mean, as Ignatus, sorry, you can do pickets uh, with imps, with upgraded imps. You can actually do a size two picket with your day one army. Of course, you would be vulnerable to morales, but you still can take a size 2 picket with Ignatus. So, you know, some people do say that basically that's the reason that they start Ignatus over Kalth. And, you know, with that, you can maybe start snowballing a little bit. But um, you can do a size 2 cons, or I mean size 1 cons with Kalth if you're careful. I think I am going to do a uh, video on that uh, sometime soon. But... The thing that you really rely on as Inferno to get rolling is external dwellings. So you really, really need either some Efreet dwellings, uh, maybe some Devil dwellings, or at least the uh, Pit Fiend dwellings as well. Those are things that you rely on as Inferno. And, you know, obviously if you don't get any, then uh, you're kind of screwed. But even if you do get them, you might die taking them uh, because the Ifrit, they are fire resistant or immune to fire. So they're immune to the fireball attack from the Magog. So you got to be careful about how you fight them and you got to do it with uh, experts or at least advanced archery. But I usually try to have expert archery before I do Ifrit dwellings or devil dwellings. And you can still die to morale on turn one because you're going to be doing those on calls usually, which means that you're going to be doing them without tactics and devils. You, you know, as I've already mentioned in my um, tier list video that I did for tier seven dwellings, uh, devils 
can not only morale and you know screw you that way but you can also get minus luck so even with expert archery you know when they give you that minus luck uh, unless you neutralize that effect you can also get screwed by minus morale so really i mean it's like you're getting squeezed on all sides as inferno and um yeah while you are relying on dwellings they are not that easy to take and if you don't get any dwellings well then you gotta rely on actually building something in your town like i've seen really good players like stinger for example rush for a freet like day one they build a mage guild and then they go for a freet uh right after that i think I think uh, if we just require, hold on, let's just double check this so I don't misspeak. Um, oh yeah, they do require a demon gate. So yeah, if you go mage guild, if you skip the gogs or the imp upgrade, you go mage guild, demon gate, and then uh, fire lake. So turn three, you can potentially get a freet, and that helps you a little bit. So usually for a size two con or for a size one cons that you can do, um, you know, with your early game army, you usually still want to have a freet, and you do want to have a freet, uh, at least in a lot of cases, to do pickets, so you actually get first move, you know, unless you're starting with Ignatus, of course. So, and uh, the other thing, you know, I've, we've talked about the demon farming as an advantage. Well, the disadvantage of demon farming is the fact that it's slow. So the conditions for demon farming is obviously that you need to have the upgraded pit lords and you also need to have meat to be able to resurrect. So usually that means having a lot of imp dwellings on the map as well. But the problem is, is that the upgraded uh, hellhole requires you to build mage guild level two. So you need demon gate and mage guild level two. So if you go straight for them, skipping the imp or the... Um, Magog upgrade, you can get Pit Lords on turn five. So that means that turn turn five is the earliest that you can start demon farming if you're relying on the upgrade in your town, right? So in a lot of cases, that's going to mean that it's going to be pretty slow, not that viable. Um, and so the the, the way to actually uh, do demon farming is. If you happen to get lucky and you find either a hill fort with a couple of uh, pit fiend dwellings, or if you happen to find a um, pit lord box, so those would make uh, demon farming a bit easier for sure because you will not actually have to rely on uh, building uh, the upgraded uh, demon dwell or pit lord dwelling in your town. So. Uh, and as far as Armageddon goes, you know, while it is an advantage uh, and you can utilize Armageddon strategies if the map just doesn't give you that much. Also, you know, you would have to build Mage Guild level four and, you know, possibly re-roll it. So uh, that, you know, will also be kind of slow and will cost you a lot of resources. And, um, you know, one more kind of advantage would be that usually you will start with plus gold. So usually your economy is going to be doing all right. And while devils are expensive to build, they will be viable because you usually will have a pretty decent economy as Inferno. And one last little thing, you know, to kind of, kind of add a cherry on top, is their special building, the frigging castle gate. It's such a meme. Like, it costs you 10k gold. And it is useless. You know, some people say it's like a built-in town portal, but it only allows you to portal between Inferno towns. Actually, it would be kind of an interesting way to buff Inferno uh, to actually make you uh, be able to teleport to other towns as well, not only Inferno. So, you know, it would be an interesting buff there. I don't know if that would make it OP or not, but I mean, right now, it's like 10k gold for, you know, pretty much a useless building. And when you compare that to some other special buildings like the Magic University for Conflux, it is expensive, but you can buy any school of magic there. Or you talk about like Mana Vortex or Portal of Summoning for Dungeon, you know, Portal of Summoning gives you an additional dragon or Mana Vortex doubles your mana for only 1k gold, you know, and you compare that to Castle Gate, which is 10k gold for, you know, pretty much a useless town portal.
All right. Well, uh, that's kind of uh, it, I think, for the strengths and weaknesses of Inferno. So now let's talk about some general strategies, right? How can you actually play Inferno? So in a lot of cases, as I've mentioned, you usually want to start with dwellings, right? So early game, you usually want to find uh, some kind of dwelling, like a free dwelling, uh, devil dwelling, or at least the uh, pit lord dwellings, and use that, hopefully not die taking them, and use that to start snowballing hives or pickets. That's pretty much the most reliable strategy for inferno that's the way you know you gotta you gotta um have the map kind of favor you in the sense that you would have pickets or i mean you would have pickets and hives that you can farm and you know dwellings that you can farm before you can get into those maybe a size one cons you know something like that something that gives you enough meat to start taking hives and snowballing that in those cases you can still break relatively early you know if you do like for example on this map, we do have a few hives, right? Uh, there's a hive here, hive here, hive here, uh, hive over here. So feasibly, if we were somehow able to actually another hive here, if we were able to get going uh, with some kind of a dwelling, you know, this probably would not be doable, 2049 vampire lords. But if we did uh, get some doable dwellings, then we could potentially start snowballing the hives with that. Uh, if you do not get any dwellings that are doable, then you are going to be relying on building those units in your town in a lot of cases, you know, just build some additional, like in this, in this map, for example, I would probably be trying to actually build something in my town, like at least try to go... Uh, for the Hell Hole and the Fire Lake, probably get the Demons, get the Pit Fiends, and get the Ifrit. And then with all of that, uh, try to go like level up Kalth or whatever hero I'm trying to main. And then try to go for this uh, Semen Hive, for example, and then try to snowball with that. So, or maybe this uh, Stone Golems one, because uh, they would be pretty easy to kite as well. So... Yeah, if you are not, um, you know, if you cannot find any good external dwellings, your best bet is probably going to be to try to build some army in your town, maybe find, you know, some additional meat through prisons, maybe side towns, and then through that, uh, start trying to snowball hives, you know, maybe level up your hero, something like that. So just figure out a way to try to snowball, you know, um, and the other strategies uh, that we've already kind of briefly mentioned would be demon farming, of course. Um, and like I said, most reliable if you can actually find a hill fort or a pit lord's box. Uh, because you don't really want to be relying on building pit lords in your town. And the Arma strategy, it can help you, you know, Ifrit slash Arma, you know, in a condition where you have to deal with a difficult break like this, for example, and you just don't have much army, uh, you know, and you just cannot snowball that much army to deal with it. Or if you have to deal with, you know, something like an Enchanter's break, maybe Power Liches, uh, maybe Cyclopes, so... Uh, in those cases, Armageddon can help you, and Armageddon can also help you in the final fight. So that is something that you can do as Inferno. And, you know, in a lot of cases, when I'm playing against Inferno, I'm always kind of cautious of that strategy. You know, I'm always cautious of getting Arma bombed, uh, especially when I see my opponent having a freet, uh, you know. So that's always kind of in the back of your mind, you know. People will be slightly scared of the Arma bombs when you are playing Inferno. But as far as I can see, guys, that is pretty much it. I mean, that's kind of all of your options as Inferno. Well, of course, you know, trying to build something like devils in your town. But again, you would need some external devil dwellings uh, and things like that. But as far as I can see, those are kind of the only options as Inferno. You know, trying to go uh, dwellings into creature banks uh, or trying to go demon farming or trying to go Arma, which, you know, the last two you don't see as often. So most reliable, try to go for dwellings and then try try to snowball hives or pickets or something like that. So if you guys 
happen to have other inferno strategies uh you know something that you do find reliable uh you know maybe some other tips i would love to hear that in the comments below um so but i think that's gonna be it for this video so thank you guys for watching and uh again stay tuned for that giveaway video that will be out soon so i hope uh that you guys find this video somewhat useful um and you know also maybe um what would be interesting is to get some ideas from you guys on how to buff Inferno. I did have somebody suggest actually uh, doing boxes like the Master, G or you know, not boxes, but like the Master Genie uh, lamps that Tower has, the way that Tower was buffed. Do something like that for Inferno, but give Pit Lords uh, instead of the Master Genies in, you know, that object, you know, whatever it will be. So. That's kind of an interesting way, you know, maybe that makes demon farming more viable, maybe that would buff Inferno in a decent way. So, uh, yeah, if you guys happen to have other suggestions on how Inferno can actually be buffed, I would also love to hear those suggestions in the comments below. Okay, guys, uh, so this will be it for the overview. Uh, again, thank you for watching, and uh, I will be back soon for more videos. And tomorrow I will be streaming, so Wednesday uh, I will be streaming. So if you're interested, uh, feel free to tune in on that. And uh, yeah, as always, I'll have the link to the stream in the video description below. All right, guys, uh, take care and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.